Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here with me today for another video. I know it's been a while since I've last posted. It has been a crazy week and, you know, being a, a mom and a wife come first. So I'm finally able to come in here and film a video for you guys today. This week I was able to uh, fix my sublimation printer. Um, most of you probably don't know this, but for the longest time I haven't been able to print in color. So about, oh gosh, it was probably six months ago or so, I took all of my colored sublimation items off my shop, like my onesies, toddler shirts, my colored coffee mugs, took them all off my shop and because I've only been able to print in black ink for some reason. So I don't know why, but I was able to finally get it fixed. I tried the magic bullet cleaner that was recommended. I tried cleaning out the print lines. I've done um, <laughs> more print head nozzle cleanings than I can count. I, I mean, probably hundreds and nothing was working. Nothing was working. Nothing was working. I get new refillable cartridges and it starts working. So lesson learned, don't jump the gun and try and do all these technical things to fix what you think is broken when really all I needed was new ink cartridges. <laughs> so I know it sounds stupid, but I went on all these different forums and, you know, sublimation pages and things like that. And it was told over and over and over and over and over again that the colored ink dried in my lines. You have to clean it out. You need a special cleaner. So that's what I went with. You know, I went with the professional's opinions and my husband was like, why haven't you tried buying new ink cartridges? So I did. I bought new cartridges from Cosmos Ink and wouldn't you know it, it was that simple. So I can finally print in color again and I'm so excited about it. I'm a little mad that it was something so simple. It's totally my fault, but it is what it is and here we are. So with that being said, I have still a bunch of blanks from the Lock and Giraffe that I bought a long time ago. So this is like a sublimation raglan. And like I said, it's from the Lock and Giraffe. So it has been a long time, like I said, since I have printed in color. So I want to test out my heat press, see what temperature and time um, works for me because it kind of varies across the board. I've been trying to re-educate myself on, you know, different materials and how long for your heat press and what temperature and things like that. So I'm going to make some shirts for my kids and see what time and temperature work best for me. And I thought I would take you guys along with me. I am going to show you the images that I'm purchasing right now and how I put them in Canva, personalize them, and then how I print it out on my Epson Workforce 7710. Um, so I will go ahead and we will get into it. Okay, so here we are in Canva. Um, it is canva.com. I pay 12, I think it's 12.95 a month for the pro version, but their free version is great too. You can get more than enough done in just the regular version. Um, so I am going to go ahead and do custom size and I'm just gonna do eight and a half by 11. And so it's gonna open a new window. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm gonna go over here on the left to uploads and then I'm going to upload these monster trucks that I just purchased off of Etsy. Make sure that orange one went, I don't know if it went. As you can see, all my other pictures in here, I use Canva for literally everything. I make my thumbnails in here, I make my size charts in here, I do photo mugs in here. I print everything from Canva. I think it is so great to use. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this green monster truck. And I think we will make the green one Samuels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these lines and just bring it in to my image as close as possible. And I will tell you why in just a moment. So I think that's, I think that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna go over here on the left to text. And then I'm going to bring this down below. And then I'm going to, who did I say I was going to do this for? Samuel? I think I will do Samuel and maybe I'll do his in a matching green. So I have it changed to the color I want and now I'm going to do it, or now I'm going to change the font. I have a bunch of my own uploaded in here. So I'm just going to see, I actually think that one looks pretty cool. It's pretty bold, I like it. 
So I'm going to, again, bring the lines in pretty close. And the reason I do that is because when I line it up in here, I can highlight both of them, go up here to position and hit center, and it'll center it for me. If you have the lines, like if I had this one, sorry, let me click off of this. If I had this one out like, like this, and then I wanted to center it, it would center it off of this line. So I want it centered on the image. So when I go like this, it squares up the image as close as possible. So now it's not off center. Now it is perfect and ready to go. And I actually think I'm gonna make that just a little bit bigger. And then again, just make sure it's centered. If it's unhighlighted like this or you know dull like this instead of these ones, then you know that it's already completely center. Then I'm going to go ahead and group and then just move it where I want it. I want it to be pretty big, I think. I might actually bring this just a little bit closer. So I think I'll do that and then group. Okay, and so now that I think it is about the size that I want, I'm going to go and download it. And then um, Canva, it saves to, uh, I think it automatically saves to my download folder, but you can change it to save to your desktop or, or whatever. So I'm going to go right here. If my computer will go, my computer wants to be really slow today, of course, when I'm recording. And then I'm going to change the name of it to Samuel. Okay, so now what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and print. So I'm going to go to file print and like I said my computer's slow so it automatically defaults to just our regular house computer so I'm going to choose my Epson workforce 7710 and so I'm going to go down here to where it says preview and then I'm going to go to media and quality and I'm going to select best and then I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to check flip horizontally this is absolutely crucial you it's just like mirroring when you cut vinyl it has to be mirrored because you're going to put it directly onto the shirt so you have to make sure you flip it so that when it prints it'll look <laughs> correctly on the shirt so we're going to go ahead and print this and then go press it okay so here it is it actually it is supposed to look more dull than it did when you made it on the computer because as you press it, it'll look um, more vibrant on like on the shirt. Um, so when you print it, it is supposed to look a little more dull than it really is. So that is it. So like I said, the reason you mirror it is because when you press it, you're going to press it like this on the shirt. So it will be, uh, you know, correct once it's pressed. So. I'm going to go ahead and get my shirt ready on the press and then talk to you guys there. Okay, so I have my shirt ready to go on my heat press. Um, I am all out of uh, lint rollers, so I'm just using this piece of packing tape to try and get as much lint off as possible. With sublimation, um, if you watched my, my last video, I talked about it a little bit when I made the coffee mug. It's the same thing for shirts or onesies or whatever it is that you're doing. You have to get as much lint off as possible because um, with, I think it's with the coating that they do on, on, the, on the sublimation garments or the different ink or the papers, there's, there's something in it, in the sublimation um, process that like doesn't like the lint in the hairs. I know that's a terrible, like su I'm super scientific way to put it. I know. Uh, but the lint in the hairs, it'll, they'll look blue underneath. Um, and I know that was a completely terrible explanation. Um, but like I said, I don't know if it's something like in the paper or on the garment itself. Um, or even just like on the coffee cups, but it turns blue if you don't have it all the way off. Um, so you want to try and get as much lint off as possible before you do, before you put your thing down. And so you also want to, I have extra paper over here. Ugh. Sorry, this is just regular uh, copy printer paper. You want to put one on the inside of your shirt 
this is to protect the the other side from the ink going all the way through your garment so you put a piece of paper in and I'm gonna straighten it back out this heat press is very hot it is at 400 degrees right now I feel like my face is melting okay so you have a piece of copy paper inside and then I have my uh, design which actually I need to stop and cut around this a little bit more so let me let me stop and do that real quick sorry I should have done that first let me stop and do that real quick and then we'll come back okay sorry about that so now I have it cut around as close as I could possibly get to the image and this is because you will still see like a line like an outline if your pressure is too high so I didn't want like a stark you know, square just in case I got my pressure wrong. Like I said, I'm still testing this out because it has been a long time since I've done actual shirts. Um, I mean, I've just been doing coffee mugs for like seven months. So I just want to make sure I do it right before I add these things back to my shop. So I am going to put this face down right here. Then I'm going to do my best to make sure it is straight and centered. If it isn't 100%, it's okay, it's just for my son. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that there. And then I'm going to put another piece of copy paper down and then do my Teflon sheet. And this is just gonna help uh, protect getting any ink on my stuff because I use this just on my regular vinyl onesies and stuff. So I don't want the ink to seep through and get onto my Teflon sheet and then transfer onto a garment, you know, any other garment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close and I don't know if you can see this on here but I have it set to 400 degrees for 30 seconds so when it is all done I'm just gonna peek and see what the colors look like um, it's kind of a one-shot deal because you will get what they call ghosting if you move it and it'll it'll look blurry if you move it and try to press it again and you don't get it in the exact same spot um, so it's it's pretty Pretty tedious. Okay, so I'm gonna slowly try and take a peek without, oh, that's hot, without moving it too much. Okay, and that actually, I can tell just by the name that it looks really good. So I'm going to grab, I put my tweezers away, so I'm gonna grab this really fast and just help me lift up. And then I saw on another page, that she, what she immediately did was take it and press it out like this and that will help not get those stark lines. So let's see, let's see how we did. Okay, so here it is. I think it turned out super cute. The colors are really vibrant. Um, I should have took like a before and after. Um, but yeah, they are a lot more vibrant than what you see on your paper. Like I said, the heat makes it more vibrant once it's actually on your garment. You can see, so this line is actually from our copy paper. It's not from our image, but you can also see if I get closer, this is from when I cut around the image. And I saw another, like I said, I saw another page where she like stretched it as soon as it was done to help prevent those lines, but I still got them. So... I don't know. I'm still going to have to play around with it before I'm comfortable adding these in my shop again. Um, I'm going to try my other sons one more time and see, see if maybe I can do something different. So let's, let's go ahead and do the orange truck. Okay. Sorry. So I actually had to change to my laptop because for some reason my other computer just wanted to freeze. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring in these marker lines all the way as close to the monster truck as possible and then I'm going to go back here and add text and my other son's name is Colston and I'm going to change it to the Norwester font again and then make it bigger and then bring the lines in and then I'm going to center it, position, center. And then I'm going to change the color on this 
Um, do we do the dark orange or the lighter? I think I like the lighter orange. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to, oops, I forgot to group. Group it together and then make it pretty big, just like the last one. And then, actually I think it was a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to go to download, PNG, download. And then go back up here and it is ready. So I'm gonna go to file, print. And then again, change it to the correct printer. Change the media and quality to best and then change the layout, flip horizontal and it is ready to go. Okay guys, so I am back again. I have the other shirt. I am taking the tape and getting as much lint off as I possibly can so that we don't get any lines. Okay, and then I'm going to straighten this back out and I'm just going to press it for a second and just heat it up just for a minute. Oops. Okay, let me straighten that back out. And then I have my son, my other son's orange truck. And as you can see, I cut it out as close as possible again. Oops, I almost forgot, almost forgot, almost forgot. Put my paper in the middle. Look at that. Okay. Come on, Kayla. You can do it. Okay. Let's try this again. Straighten that back out. Put my image on as straight as possible. And then another piece. Maybe this one I'll try to fold. Nah, well, let's do this. Because I really don't want those lines again. And then my Teflon sheet. And then press for 30 seconds. Okay, so when it is done, I'm going to try and stretch it out even, uh, like even more and even faster. Uh, just be careful with that. Okay, let's see here. Take this paper off. Take this off. Ooh, that is bright orange. Ooh, I love it. Okay. Ooh, that's hot. 400 degrees. Super hot. Get the paper out of there. Shake it around. Pull on it. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Hopefully it works. Okay, let's take it to the table and check it out. Okay, so here we are. I somewhat think that it worked a little bit better. Um, I don't know if that's showing up on camera. I mean, you that line actually looks a little more distinct on camera than it does in person. Um, that line's pretty, pretty prominent. So... I don't know guys, if you are experienced in sublimation, what am I doing wrong and how do I get rid of these lines from my paper? What do I need to do? Is it my pressure? Is it, I don't know, what is it? What's, what's my problem? Somebody help me. Um, I do love how vibrant the colors are, so I think my temperature's okay. So I'm really wanting to put money down that it's a pressure issue. So leave me a comment below if you know what I am doing wrong and how I can fix it. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for coming along with me. I wish I had the shirts to actually hold up and show you, but my kids have already taken them and put them on and are long gone. So, so I don't have anything to show you at the end of the video, but 
that's okay. So I'm hoping that I will be able to add more like colored onesie, the sublimation onesies and the raglan shirts to my shop soon. I already have my colored coffee mugs listed. Um, but if I can get my pressure settings right with this and not have that outline, then I will be good to go and be ready to list them. But I obviously don't want to list a product that I'm not 100% on. So I'm going to be holding off on those for just a little bit longer. If you know why I'm getting those lines, please leave me a comment in the section below and let me know what I am doing wrong, what I need to do different. Um, I would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate your help. So um, again, thank you so much for watching this video hit the like button, hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel, and make sure you turn on your post notifications so that you get notified every single time I upload a video, and I will see you guys next time.